Welcome to Marina's Yarn Harbor, a podcast and Instagram account about knitting, yarn, and sometimes crochet. This is episode one. Since this is episode one, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Marina, and I'm a knitter located in South Central Michigan, where I live with my husband, Steve, and our two cats, Sushi and Miso. I've been knitting for about 15 and a half years, and I have just recently started working on designing my own knit patterns. Um, the two that I've published so far are for socks. The third one is also for socks, but I've been procrastinating, so we'll get to that eventually. Um, most of my knitting uh, is done in collaboration with my cousin Astasia of Beautiful Simplicity Fiber Company. Um, she runs uh, that indie dyeing company out of uh, her little studio in Hamilton, Montana. Um, and so once I finish a project, uh, more often than not, it gets boxed up and mailed uh, to go live in the local yarn store um, as samples for her until um, she gets to take them home or she sends them back to me. Um, very often I also get to help her with um, brainstorming for colorways, um, figuring out what collections to do next. Um, so even though we're really far apart distance wise because she's in Montana and I'm in Michigan, um, I really wouldn't be able to do as much knitting um, or really creative things with yarn if it weren't for her. Um, so thank you, Stasia. Um, and actually, it wasn't until she started dying that I really got interested in um, more about yarn, like fiber content, how it's dyed. Um, indie dyeing has really caught my attention now. Um, and I really, it's very interesting to see um, how people create different colorways based on very similar ideas. Um, and then just to see the different ways that people express themselves through yarn. Um, so I was really excited um, when I found out that there was going to be a Fall Fiber Expo here uh, in Michigan in Ann Arbor, um, and that is actually going to be the subject of our podcast today. Um, my plan going forward is that the podcast is definitely going to have your standard podcast structure um, with your finished objects, your whips, acquisitions, etc. Um, but for this podcast, I wanted to highlight the Fiber Expo um, and share the adventures that Steve and I had uh, when we went this last weekend um, on Saturday, September, not September, wow, Saturday, October um, 8th, um, again, like this last Saturday, because um, it was a lot of fun. So without further ado, here is um, the footage that we got uh, of the day of, and then I will talk a little bit about some of our experiences and, of course, acquisitions. <music>
So there were a ton of vendors at this event. We're talking over 70. Um, I went through the website and counted how many names there were. Um, there were three gigantic barns full of the yarn essentially and so it was kind of a dream. It was also a little overwhelming. Um, so getting started I took it a little bit slow because you don't want to you don't want to go and blow your budget on like the first three booths um, especially when there's three barnfuls. Um, so the very first booth that we stopped at was um, Stitch Stuff Yarn Company um, and her last name actually is Stuff which I thought was a lot of fun. Um, she really has made the most of that. Um, she and her daughter were super nice. Um, she was actually working on a cowl at the time. Um, I don't remember which one, um, but it was a really, really fun bright green that actually her granddaughter had died. So I thought it was really cool um, that three generations were involved with yarn and and um, with their, their um, family business. Um, so there were definitely some schemes there and a sock set that I saw that I, I really should have grabbed, but... I didn't. Um, instead, like I said, I was taking it easy. Um, and so I purchased instead uh, two such a sets, oh my goodness, two sets of stitch markers. Um, so this one I'm keeping for myself. The other one um, was a lighter green floral. Um, and I got that for my friend Kara, who actually was supposed to come with me, um, but due to illness that day, couldn't make it. Um, so I snagged those for her. Um, they're super pretty. I'm, I'm really excited to, to put them to work into my project, but I, I saved them so that all y'all could see. Um, let's see here. I know I started with acquisitions and telling you what I purchased immediately, but this I didn't buy. Um, I'm going to put it up this way, maybe, maybe over my face. I don't know. I'm going to put up a picture of um, the work of Crochet by D. Um, her name is D Greaves and she's from Dearborn, Michigan. Um, it was the perfect pullover, um, or the, what she called it was a Michigan car coat. Um, it was made, I do believe fully out of alpaca. It was super warm. Um, but not overwhelmingly so. And it was so fuzzy. It left, <laughs> left so much fuzz all over my cardigan. Um, but it was so much fun. I just thought it was really interesting structurally. Um, I like the concept a lot of having, um, more structure at the throat and at the wrists and then everything else being kind of that loose kind of meshy um fiber fabric um I do think that it really does make sense for the Michigan area um because you do you do want to be warm between the car and where you're going in but you know that it's going to probably be temperature controlled within the car and in wherever you're going so it's a it's a fun idea. I definitely was inspired um, just by the, the design of it because I hadn't seen anything like that ever before. Um, but no, she was super sweet. And then she gave me, gave me her card with the price point. So I know what I have to save up for if I want to purchase the Michigan car coat. Um, but I didn't, I didn't do it this time. <laughs> um, oh, I also got to see um, Jamie at M1 Yarns, who I have purchased uh, Stitch Saver Stitch Saver cords, Stitch Saver cords um, from her before um, through her website. There was a really super cute tote bag, um, little tiny one that has drawstring. It was adorable. I wanted to pick up that one, but I had already made a purchase by that point um, of a new bag, which I'll show you here briefly. Uh, not briefly, but soon. I'll probably talk about it for way too long. <laughs> um, so this one, this was fun to get to see Jamie in person. Um, another one that we stopped by, um, I'm sure there was footage in that montage um, of Stonehenge Fiber Mill with the, their crazy yarn, which talk about a, an array of colors. And I, and I said, when I was looking at it, I'm like, I don't know what I would make with this. And they're like, well, what wouldn't you make with it? And even though that's a valid point. So I'm, I'm going to think about that and try and think of a, an application that would make sense to me, um, in my knitting, but I really did. I thought of, they were a lot of fun and they're definitely super unique. Um, so yeah, they were, they were fun. I don't know if I met Deb and Jody. 
or either one of them. I don't know who I met. All I know is they were very helpful. Um, another person that I got to talk to um, was Kat with Why Not Fibers. Um, so I actually met her in person at the Wool and Wine Festival um, back in July, I think. Yes, back in July. And I purchased this one of a kind or unicorn skein from her. It is on her um, spunky sport weight. Um, and she had me name it and I panicked. I'm like, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I, I'm uh, unless if I don't have time to to think about it I'm really not super great with last minute name picking so um but she remembered it so that was I guess maybe I am good at name picking <laughs> so we talked about that a little bit and it was really nice to to catch up with her and then also see let her see how the skein had worked up um she had some beautiful mini skeins um that had um the Selena sparkle in it um, the pink one, I, I might, I don't know what I would make with it, but I think I, I might need to purchase that because it was just to die for. Um, so speaking of things now that I did purchase, <laughs> uh, specifically ombre. So I have a friend who she was like, I would love a, a shawl, um, but she wanted it in ombre. And so I really did consider the um the skeins from cat because i think that would be so gorgeous in a shawl but um this one isn't for me it's for my friend so i was taking pictures of things as i went and i happened upon um fiber story who i've never heard of before um but they made their, their booth was like their booth was great it was super super clean and well lit which sounds like a weird set of criteria for a nice booth but it just it felt nice um and they had some really pretty displays of their yarn. Um, there was actually a shawl in the colorway I'm about to show you that went through the whole thing. Um, scarf shawl, um, so the smaller one. So pretty. Um, so as I ramble, I was taking pictures of various ombre mini skein sets um, for my friend, but the cell service was terrible. Um, so I took a picture of the displays at the um, Fiber Story booth and then Steve and I were like, oh my God, we're dying. We're so hungry. And so I was like, all right, well, hopefully once I, once we go outside to eat, um, my cell will finally get some service. So I was able to get a hold of my friend, be like, hey, check your messages. Um, so she checked and she gave me her feedback and she was like, I really like that green one. And I was like, oh no, she likes the green one. Cause I knew when I took pictures that the green one was the last one. So I told Steve, I'm like, watch my food. And I took off <laughs> and I ran back inside and the ladies at Fiber Story can corroborate that I was breathless by the time I got to their booth because I thought it was one direction and it was the other way. Um, so I ended up getting the mini, mini skein gradient set in minted. And this is a uh, hundred percent superwash merino wool. Uh, 80 yards per mini skein, about 480 yards. Um, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And now we just have to figure out which beads that she would like to go in it. But this was a success. The fact that we found this, this made me really, really happy. Um, and I probably should have stopped shopping there, but I didn't. <laughs> um, let's see here. So other yarn purchases. Um, let's see here. We happened upon Keenan hand dyed yarn. Um, she had a little section in front for, for clearance. Um, this was one of the skeins that was in the clearance box. And um, it's not like there's anything wrong with it. It just didn't meet what she wanted for the colorway. Although I do believe the colorway was supposed to be October. Um, and I, I saw it and I knew immediately that my friend Rachel would love this. So I purchased this for her. Um, I really like it, especially this little spot of yellow right there in the middle. It's about 463 yards, uh, super wash merino sock yarn. Um, and I, like I said, I think the color name was October, but, um, that's not on my card. So Rachel can name it whatever she wants. <laughs> um, the booth across from 
Keenan was called Passion Yarns and they had a, a big um, clearance section as well. And I s decided I was like, I, well, I'd been on the hunt anyway. So as you know, Kara couldn't come with. And I thought about it. I'm like, stitch markers aren't enough. She really wanted to come and she was very disappointed. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy her some yarn because it's a fiber expo. How do you not buy yarn? Um, so I went through the clearance bin and I found, I'll put a picture up of, um, I found two skeins of a color name I can't remember right now, but super pretty, really, really interesting blend of um, like an indigo to an, like a green kind of color back to a purple. Um, if this is inaccurate, I'm talking off of memory because I don't have them with me anymore. And the picture is on my phone, which is currently recording. So um, I hope that sounds about right. Either way, she was really happy with them when we got them over to her house and that's what really mattered. Um, but in my hunt for something for Kara, I found something for myself. Um, this is the colorway Best of My Love and I just really loved these deeper jewel tones, These this red, well I don't know what I'd call it, red mahogany maroon. Really like this maroon color. Um, and the jewel tones with the with the purple and the blue, it just blends in such an interesting way. And so this is probably going to become socks. Um, it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. Um, and it is nice and squishy. Um, Deb, uh, Debbie and her husband were super, super nice. Um, they were very entertaining. Um, laughing about yarn husbands because my <laughs> my husband was getting b-roll footage for me um, uh, but they both they were both a lot of fun uh, and he was super it, it's so nice to see uh, couples working together especially for small businesses and small family businesses like this but um, they were also so kind because um, they gave me a progress keeper with my yarn but they also gave me one for Kara even though she wasn't there um, which was very very kind and then my final stop was over at, um, oh no, it wasn't my final stop. I didn't even tell you. I was about ready to not tell you about my bag. Okay. <laughs> I got to meet Jean of Mid Mitten Designs and I have seen her bags in a couple different local yarn stores. And then of course online because I follow her on the internet. I'm not a stalker, I promise. <laughs> she has such great taste in fabrics. Um, but also everything she makes is super, super well made. And so, you know, talking about trying to like determine when to spend the money. So walked over to her booth, saw this pattern. It's sheep with flower crowns. It's sheep with flower crowns, sheep that are knitting. They're just, they're so stinking cute and just so girly. I loved it. And I'm so, I mean, obviously I loved it. I brought it home with me. <laughs> Um, super well made, really well designed. They've got this front part here is clear. So if you wanted to put a project in there to keep it separate or, um, maybe your, your, um, pattern. Um, although I don't know why you'd want to cover up the sheep. Um, and then on the inside, now she told me what all the pockets are for, but if I can remember, heaven help me. Um, but there is a pocket for your cell phone. Um, I would think your wallet could probably fit in there too. Um, and then also um, knitting notions, pens, pencils, um, extra needles, a variety, a variety of things that could fit in this bag in addition to the fact that it's just such a nice size. Right now I've got a sweater in here um, that I'm working on for my cousin. Um, and it's just been, I've been using it a lot. Um, I haven't been walking around with it yet, but it's got a crossbody strap, so I could. Um, knitting and walking might be in my future. <laughs> we'll see. Um, the back also has super cute fabric. Uh, it just, it's just so well done. And it just makes me happy. It just makes me happy every time I see it. You can never have too many bags. <laughs> Now the last one that we went to. Um, so the initial pass through uh, that we did of the Mitchell Wool Company, um, I grabbed two things. The first one that I purchased was a sticker. That'll block right out. They had it in shirts, um, but they didn't have my size uh, at the expo, which that's fine, no hard feelings. I like stickers, um, although I do get sticker anxiety because once it's stuck, it's, it's stuck. 
Um, so <laughs> I take forever to figure out where I'm going to put it, but, um, super cute design. Um, and then speaking of t-shirts, I got this for my cousin, Astasia. She's a big fan of friends. And so I couldn't, I couldn't pass this up. How you do it. And then, and then we, that's when we went to lunch and then I had to run back and go get the other one. And then, um, while I was picking that up, I was like, you know what? I know uh, who else I need to knit for. So I went, we went back, not, not I, Steve was with me the whole time. We went back, um, and we picked up two skeins of the Cormo worsted yarn, um, from Mitchell Wool. Um, uh, Mitchell Wool is really unique in that they own the sheep, they own the land, they own the mill. Um, nothing is super washed. Everything is dyed, um, naturally and using a lot of plants that are actually on the land. Um, so I'll talk more about this in a second. With each of the purchases, they, uh, and they also handle all of their printing and things. You got another bag. And then this one's a little bit cheeky, um, but they actually really mean that um, because they, they do their best to have, you know, clean, sustainable practices, stuff that reduces microplastics, um, really treating the sheep well and, and keeping it a family business. I got to meet um, Cindy, Sherry, and Luke, who are all directly involved with the sheep on pretty much a daily basis. And if not the sheep, then the yarn or the printing or, you know, they've, they've all got their hands in it because it's, it's their livelihood. And I, I, I find that really admirable. Um, I don't know that I would be good at raising sheep. Maybe they'll let me come visit and find out. But anyway, um, Cormo Worsted. So really nice squish. It's not super washed. Um, the color is brown raw. 40 grams, uh, about 112 yards. And my hope is to, they also have the number of microns on there as well. Um, my hope is to make socks for Spencer, um, my Astasia's husband, um, out of these. I have done one pair for him before, um, one pair before him before. Um, and I'm hoping that these ones go a little bit faster now that I know a little bit more about what I'm doing and how non-super wash um, wool works um, in my hands. It sounds weird, but I'm really used to super wash. And so the non super wash is just a little bit different. Um, but I need to find a pattern pattern for a vanilla sock, which that shouldn't be, shouldn't be too bad, but yeah. So surprise Spencer, you're getting some non non super wash socks. Cause he goes hunting and ice fishing and, and the non super wash just, I feel like holds up a little bit better for the use that, that he's going to be getting out of it. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's everything. I think so. Yeah. So super fun day. Had a really great time. Um, it sounds like they do this every six months. Um, and so the next one is going to be in spring, uh, April 1st and 2nd of 2023. Um, and so I might see about figuring out whether or not I can get to that one. Maybe plan a little better in advance to find out if I want to take some classes um and maybe maybe get a little group together to go do that because I think that would be I think that'd be a really good time um so yeah um I really don't know how to end this very well um I'm gonna do the annoying YouTube thing and say hey if you could please like subscribe and ring the notification bell I never thought I'd say that, but yeah, if you could please like subscribe and ring the notification bell, that would be fabulous, especially because this is my first one. Um, but I mean, only do that if you really want to, if you'd like to see what I pro probably do next, we'll see how this, uh, how this, how this goes, if I want to do a, a standard podcast, but anyway, um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. Bye. And this is when she realized she'd forgotten to say, check out the description box below for links to all of the vendors that were talked about in today's video. All right. Thank you. Bye for real.